Hey guys, welcome to another video. I'm quite excited about this one. The AM3 platform. Quite a good alternative to Socket 775 that we've been looking at in recent videos. And we're gonna start it off with looking at AMD's final triple core processor. So triple core processors are quite interesting. They're not around anymore, but they were quite popular back in the day. The main reason was for improving yields. So if you've got a quad core processor, not every core might be fully working. So if there's one core that's faulty, AMD could sell the processor as a triple core. But from a marketing point of view, it also made sense. They cost less for the consumer compared to a quad core and they offered a good balance of high clock speed as well as having decent enough multi-threaded performance more than a dual core processor. And this was all around a time when for gaming a fast dual core would usually win the race against a slower clocked quad core. So the triple core was a nice uh, balance. You could get excellent gaming performance because of the high clock speed, but you also get a, got a nice little boost with multi-threaded software. So the CPU we're using today is the AMD Phenom 2X3B77. We've got three cores running at 3.2 gigahertz. We've got one and a half megabytes of level two cache and six megabytes of level three cache. There is a 95 watt TDP and the CPU launched in May of 2010. I got this processor from AliExpress and it cost me around $20 including free shipping. Now AMD offered quite a range of triple core processors and if we look at the table on Wikipedia we can see quite a few interesting things. Firstly the B77 is a business class processor. This had to do with offering a stable platform for 24 months. Also the processor is based on the Deneb quad core with one core disabled and it seems to be the only triple core processor which has the C3 stepping and it's also got the highest clock speed. However, it doesn't have an unlocked multiplier like the Black Edition CPUs. Now for testing the processor, we need a motherboard, of course. I already had some AM3 and AM3 Plus motherboards on hand, but I like shopping from AliExpress. So I had a look to see what prices are like and I found this MSI motherboard that I got for 36 US dollars including postage. So this one is from MSI, which is a bit different. Usually I go for Asus or Gigabyte. It's the 870A-G54. So this is a really nice full ATX motherboard. It has military class components, so hopefully it's gonna last a while. I really like the compatibility with RAM, so it uses DDR3 memory. The processor uh, will run the memory at uh, 1333, and it supports up to 32 gigabytes of memory. At the moment, I'm using two sticks, eight gigabytes each for 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's what I like to use with the benchmarks. We've got PCI Express 2.0, and we also have six um, SATA 3 connectors, which run at six gigabits per second. We also have a ton of USB ports. There are uh, a total of six USB ports through headers, but we have another six at the back and also USB 3.0, which is really nice. I was also very impressed with the temperatures. The chipset cooler doesn't really get hot at all. Uh, nothing compared to what I saw with the Socket 775 and also the VRMs, uh, there are quite a lot of them, and also temperatures were absolutely fine, um, so that surprised me quite a bit. And what else is interesting about this motherboard, AMD uh, pitched this the Dragon platform, which was a combination of an AMD chipset, processor and uh, a video card, and there's some really nice software, AMD Overdrive, and yeah, um, really impressed me, a lot of information, but you can also go in there, tweak the voltages and some other bits and pieces. I updated the latest BIOS and there are tons of options for overclocking and tweaking, including some really nice information screens that tell you what features the processor supports, for example. There's also a OC gear button and dial here, which uh, let you 
overclock uh, while the machine is running. Not something I'm using, I'm not that much into overclocking, but definitely a nice feature to have. So I think it's time to put everything onto the test bench, fire up the capture computer and see what this machine can do. Like with the other videos in the past, we're using a Radeon RX 570 for the benchmarking and for the cooling, I got this CPU cooler. This is the uh, AMD 125 watts thermal solution. It's basically the Rave cooler, but without the shroud and the lighting. In Cinebench, we're getting 235. In CPU set, we're getting 307 for multi-core and 153.1 for single core performance. Next up, we've got some 3D Mark results. Cloudgate, Night Raid, Skydiver, and Firestrike. Night Raid, for some reason, did not produce a score, but the other results seem to be fairly decent. And here's the first game, Rise of the Tomb Raider, running with the DirectX 12 API. And up to high details, we're getting 66 FPS, which is very nice. Strange Brigade, this game uses the Vulcan API and runs extremely well on older machines. High details, 79 FPS. An older game, Tomb Raider, this game runs extremely well, even at ultra details, 131 FPS. Does it run Crisis? Yes, it does. DirectX 10, the 64-bit version, and we're getting 59 FPS at medium details. And a new addition to the benchmarks, F1 2015. This game seems to be quite demanding on the processor. Even with low details, we're only getting 57 FPS, but I would still consider this to be playable. And now we're gonna have a look at some games. Okay. Looks like we climb from here. Keep your eyes open for falling ice. Right. You ready? Let's do it. private deck. Now we're getting somewhere. Ah, but according to Intel, Ritter is another enforcer who picks his own cabin crew. So tread carefully. The target will spot you if you get too close. To eavesdrop on his conversation, try and find a way to blend in. Right. 
six, 60. Right one. Into turn left one past junction. And left four. So guys, let's talk about the AMD B77 triple core processor. Now in regards to performance, the machine felt quite similar to the Socket 775 platform, but I found the AM3 platform is a little bit more fleshed out and modern. So for example, we're getting SATA 3 with 6 gigabits per second. That definitely helps with loading times. It's also nice to see USB 3.0 on the motherboard, although this is through an additional NEC chip. And look, you can always add a PCI Express USB 3.0 card uh, to a Socket 775 machine as well. We also get a lot of RAM. This is a real issue with Socket 775. With older and cheaper motherboards only supporting 4 or 8 gigabytes of RAM. So this AM3 board can take up to 32 gigabytes. This is something, for example, that my P43 Socket 775 motherboard can't do. It tops out at 16 gigabytes. Just like with the Core 2 Quad, this processor doesn't support the latest CPU instructions. So newer games, for example, Assassin's Creed, those games will simply not run. Now coming back to the performance, I really like the performance of this 3.2 GHz triple core processor. Now it's not like I was blown away, but uh, certainly uh, optimized games such as games that use the Vulkan API like Doom or Strange Brigade, they run really well on this processor. But we saw the same thing for DirectX 12 games like Rise of the Tomb Raider and also uh, to a certain extent uh, Hitman. Now both games will struggle uh, a bit in more demanding areas, but they're both quite playable. Older games, of course, well, they will run really well on this machine and the AM3 platform is extremely flexible. It is Windows XP compatible and most games have legacy features like an IDE port and a floppy port and in the BIOS you can play around with disabling cores and changing the multiplier. So if you fancy a 2 GHz single core processor machine with an IDE hard drive and a floppy drive, you can do that with the AM3 platform. So as always, time for a reality check. The very latest and greatest games will likely struggle and some games won't even run. But so far I'm really happy with what I've seen from the AM3 platform. The motherboard certainly was a good choice and it did a good job. I had zero issues and I was really impressed with how cool the chipsets and the VRMs were. Now there's one more thing that we need to talk about of course and that is unlocking of those disabled cores. I'm not sure yet if this triple core processor will unlock but that is definitely something we will be checking out in a future video. Also I've got a few more processors that are in the mail so there is definitely a lot more to come. But don't worry, we will not dismiss Socket 775. There will be more videos as well on that platform. So from what I've seen so far, I'm pretty excited about the AM3 platform. The performance so far is pretty decent and I'm looking forward to trying out some quad-core processors with a higher clock speed. But do let me know, what do you want to see um, in future videos to do with the AM3 platform. I'm always eager to uh, hear what you think and yep, chances are we will make it happen. And guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you found this video interesting and you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Give it a like, share it with your friends and I shall see you soon with another one.